Hello, my name is Beak Supreme, and this video is for the. Uh, va uh, this is for the. Um, oh gosh, I'm just kind of a little bit tired. It is for uh, the Beak Robotics YouTube channel. All right, right now it's October twenty second, two thousand twelve, and hopefully I'm just going to make a short video showing people how to run Scum VM and to run Maniac Mansion on any operating system therefore any computer uh, very easy to do <clears throat> now before I fall asleep I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on this alright scum VM I've been using it for a couple years now uh, stands for scriptable utility ma uh, scriptable utility for maniac mansion and virtual machine um, it runs on like practically anything. I mean, seriously. I mean, just look at the um, look at the list here. I mean, it runs on Windows. It runs on Mac OS. Runs on Linux, and not just Linux, but several different variants of uh, GNU Linux, uh, such as Fedora, which is you know, formerly known as Red Hat, Debian, Ubuntu. Runs on Slackware. Runs on uh, I the iPhone. Runs on the Android platform. The Web OS. Uh, runs on the PlayStation 3. Runs on the Dreamcast. The, the Sega Dreamcast. They even made it for the Nintendo 64. Even though you'd probably need a uh, DD64 or some other method to load it in. Uh, they made it. They compiled it. And made it for the Nintendo GameCube. The Nintendo Wii. The GP2X. The GP2X Wiz. The Canoe. The pa the Pandora. They even made it for Amiga OS uh, and for some Samsung TVs. Uh, in the past, they've made it available for the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation Portable, Symbian, Solaris, which is a Unix operating system, along with Irix, it's another Unix. OS 2, um, Nintendo DS, and just all kinds of stuff. So it would run... <coughs> <coughs> I mean, it'll run on just about any electronic device that you would own. Okay, uh, my first, um, I, w I want to show you this game uh, called Maniac Mansion, and it's the, um, uh, now I played it originally in the late 1980s when I was in school because this game was regarded as edutainment. Um, I guess you can consider it like puzzle, but it's one of those games where you got to be able to do this and in order to do that. Uh, well, you have to do this in order to do that. Here's some of the gameplay on the original Commodore 64 version, I believe. The game was originally for the Commodore 64. I played it on the Apple II. Um, and I've, I have the Nintendo cartridge for it, the actual physical cartridge, along with the Nintendo ROM. Um... I think I played it in 1988 or was it 1989 and maybe 1990 but but definitely around 19, 1988 and 1989 although it came out exactly 25 years ago in October of 1987 uh, you can see today is uh, October 22nd uh, October 22nd 2012 uh, this game is exactly 25 years old now it originally released on the Commodore 64 25 years ago. <clears throat> Here's the game's creator right here, Ron Gilbert. Um, he did a really good job. Uh, Gary Winnick, yeah, his involvement was good. Based on this house here, Skywalker Ranch, really nice looking house. I've never been there, but I'd like to see it. Looks nice. Uh, so anyway, okay. Uh, the game was so successful, so popular, that it was later ported, exported, uh, adapted to the IBM PC in 1988, uh, running MS-DOS, and the Apple II, which I played it on the Apple IIe, and the graphics basically looked like this uh, back then. Uh, on uh, And this is what the Commodore 64 version the IBM PC version from 1988 
and the Apple II version from 1988. Here's what they all look like. This is what they all had in common. This is what they, uh, this is the original game graphics. Then the game was still popular. So in 19, um, 1989, they released it again with better graphics for the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga and what other system did they release it on? Uh, yeah, the IBM PC again with, with better graphics. Okay, and then the final release of it was for the Nintendo Entertainment System in which most people were familiar with the um, with the Nintendo version and it had some pretty good graphics for the time probably one of the graphically best uh, versions of the game um, but the, it, it, it had been modified quite a bit <coughs> excuse me I um, I, um, I, got, I still got a little bit of a cold okay now um, of course, um, I believe ScumVM was written to um, use um, uh, was it used for SD? Yep, written in C plus plus and for SDL and SDL is Simple Direct Media Layer. Basically, if you're familiar with what um, DirectX is, well, SDL is basically the um, the free open source alt. Um, alternative or uh, yeah uh, rival and really companies and people should write their games of course in some kind of C programming language something that's cross-platform and very powerful and the industry standard and then they should use SDL because I mean they all we gotta do is write the game once and then they can run on any platform. Uh, look, Android, Amiga, BSD, Linux. Oh, SDL is really big on Linux. Now you can run you can run SDL on Mac OS. Uh, a couple game consoles, and you can run it on Windows. So like, why waste your time writing a game on DirectX, and then it's only available on the personal computer through Microsoft Windows. I mean, if you're a game developer, then your target audience is very limited. Just write it for SDL, and you can you can still use it on Windows, um, and you can run on many other operating systems. Therefore, your game can go anywhere that SDL exists, which is virtually any operating system. <coughs> Um, SDL has some good features and all that anyway um, yeah so anyway um, yeah I've done a little bit of Pi game uh, development um, just a little bit I'm not an expert um, but anyway that's that now it took me a year and a half to collect every Port and version of Maniac Mansion for the first game because there was a sequel called a sequel called Day of the Tentacle. So anyway, um, I showed you the uh, Scum VM website and now uh, you just install it. Now in my case, because I use Linux, I do not use Microsoft Windows. I would just go and use the um, the Synaptic Package Manager and. Um, I just put in my administration password. What do you look for? Type in scumvm. Uh, you see it's checked here in green. That means I already have it installed. Um, and you just check that you want to install it. It tells you what all it needs. Click OK, click Apply, wait for it to download, install, it's all great. It's very easy. Um, I, I prefer this much better than Microsoft Windows. Now, I have ScumVM. Now we go to games here, and there's some good games here on Linux. 
and what you're going to see is you're going to see this. Now you have to add games. I'm running Scum VM, and I really like their artwork and all that. So you go to add a game. Now um, go up to directory. What I did is um, I'm going to add, here's the original 1988 port of it. I'm going to choose that, and it's listed as Maniac Mansion version 1. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to add another game. Uh, and you can add all kind of other games that were written for that were written in scum which is a scriptable utility for maniac mansion i believe there's monkey's island zach mccracken some other games and i'm going to look for yeah, maniac mansion here now this one here is version two is what they call it <clears throat> and all it is is basically they changed the artwork uh they made the graphics look better and adapted it to the system capabilities of the Atari ST, the Commodore Amiga, and the IBM PC again. Now this is from 1989. Now the first one that I show you is from 1988. Still had the original graphics and all that. I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, I'm going to choose Michael and Bernard. <clears throat> now in Maniac Mansion, you automatically start with Dave. Uh, you cannot escape uh, playing the game as him. Uh, it's automatically chosen for you because um, it's his girlfriend that got hide that that got kidnapped, and you gotta save her. So basically, your friend's got to buddy up and save your girlfriend. And I like Michael because he's got good skills, and Bernard he's got good skills. But you can choose any of these kids, and they all have different skills. Some of them overlap, such as Sid and Razor. They're both musicians. Um, Michael, no, 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 no. Dave right here, and um, oh gosh, I forget this dude's name. Jeff. He has no talent. Um, <coughs> so there's two characters there that don't have any talent. Uh, Wendy, I believe, she's got writing talent. She's kind of unique in the game because there's no other character like her. Now, Michael, he's a photographer, um, and Bernard, he's a science nerd and all that. And these characters probably have the most amount of ta the most amount of talent and and skill and proficiency. So it's probably why I relate to them the most and choose them uh, most typically. But all these different kids have different strengths, um, and you can get a different ending or you can finish the game a different way. Depending, uh, depending upon, uh, excuse me, I'm a little bit tired here, um, because it's almost one o'clock in the morning. But you can finish the game and achieve things based upon which kids you uh, you choose. Start it here. Now these are the original graphics from 1980, well, basically from 1987, and especially 1988. <laughs> That's the original music too. Oh, shame the guy into submission and and uh, and to obey. Oh, here's the 1980s horror genre music uh, uh, type of reference. That's enough for the music. <clears throat> now 
now the first trouble people usually have when playing Maniac Mansion, and it can be kind of intimidating, is what do you do? All right, very simple. You have to go into the mansion. What you have to do is you have to pull the rug, right, or the carpet, then you find the key. You pick it up, and you'll learn how this uh, this game works. Pick it up. Oh, come on, dumbass. All right, pick up the key. Now, you got to use the key with the door. Now, the older the version of Maniac Mansion, the more verbs it has down here. And this was really the first game that really kicked off this era of you no longer had to type commands like Leisure Suit Larry or other games where you you had a, an instruction interpreter where you would tell it what to, you'd literally type what you wanted to do walk over to the, the the door or whatever and this here it's point and click which was very revolutionary at the time okay um, we're going to go over here we're going to open now later versions of Maniac Mansion or incarnations or whatever they reduced the amount of verbs uh, they consolidated them <clears throat> uh, such as Maniac Mansion Deluxe, which was not made by Lucas Games or whatever um, George Lucas's company, it was uh, it was just made by people like me. I mean, not me specifically, but people who are fans of the game. Right, open here. Now, in this one here, this um, yeah. You'll see how it is in the 1989 version of the game. Okay. Uh, you pick up the flashlight. Pick up the chainsaw. <laughs> There's no gas for it. That's a red herring. That's a little trick there. Alright, open the fridge. Now, this is what this game was also known for is its cutscenes. Um, it's what it introduced. There's items there. In that one. And quit. Alright. Now I'm going to start the game again. We'll watch this thing we do in Linux. It's very easy. Uh, this is this operating system that I'm using is called Linux Mint, and this is version 13. Look at this. Right click on it, add to panel, and there it is. Just click on it here. All right, we're going to go to version 2, which is, well, that's what they call version 2. It's actually the 1989 uh, adaptation for more powerful systems. We're going to um, see where our options are for render mode. Um, uh, I'd like to do full screen, but... <clears throat> but the thing is... Um, my screen capture program might not uh, pick up all on that because it'll shift the, uh, the display into a different mode. So I'm going to have to stay with the window here. Um, no, alright. Um, and, um, alright, there's some of these other features here. Um, you, you can. You can You can choose different themes. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Well. Interesting options. Yeah, I'm gonna change that theme again. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Okay. I got myself into a dilemma here. No, there's a way to figure that out. I'll show you how to uninstall. Let's take the lazy way out. Alright. 
show you how to use uh, this is a synaptic package manager it's common in um, <coughs> GNU Linux operating system uh, distributions that are based on Debian it's marked for complete removal right here and apply it I'm going to remove um, this is how you uninstall software and I'll show you how to install software again I'm just going to refresh this here and then snack the package manager and we need administrative privileges because we're going to install all software and change system type in either the name of the program if you know what it is or the description of what the program does and look for scum all right shows up and this what this does this connects to an online software repository a server has a bunch of software packages that are compiled and built for your uh, for your system just mark for installation tells you what it needs you know these dependencies check apply tells you what it's got to do how much space it's going to take and all that <clears throat> here we go I got 20 megabits per second downstream speed on my cable internet look at that and it's already downloaded now it's installing it on my system Well, let's see if this still calls it punk. Remember that. I might be stuck with this little config. Oh crap. Oh well. I like the other interface better. It just emulates the type of system you need to play Scum VM. Alright, I guess I'm stuck with this. No, it's still got my settings and all that, so we just restart. Oh, you crap. Um, yeah, this is, um, all right, I shouldn't have changed any of that. There we go. There we go. Alright. I was just being stupid actually, I'm sorry. Here we three times the size. Ah, it was normal no scaling. Ah, that's what it was. Okay. That's what the problem was. <clears throat> ah, I kinda of feel like a dummy now. Alright, now we're gonna play this. Okay, this is the nineteen eighty nine uh Port of it to the uh, Atari ST Commodore 64, or not, not Commodore 64, I'm sorry, Commodore Amiga and the IBM PC. But we are playing the IBM PC version because it has the LFL files, which is um, what we are looking for. Um, and um, yes, I'll show you what we're looking for right here. And you'll need the IBM PC version, um, regardless of what system you're going to play it on. Uh, here's the executable for the IBM PC uh, using MS-DOS as some people will be familiar with and I'm not going to run the actual game engine and all that we're just using these data files right here um, same goes for this here the LFL files are what you actually need so ScumVM uses here now we're going to start it <clears throat> You'll notice the graphics look uh, look better. Um, now I'm just running it at three times its original resolution and size. I'm going to choose Michael again and Bernard because I relate to them the most.
You'll notice that the music is a little bit better also. Notice how much it looks like Skywalker Ranch, the, the house does. Shame the guy who doesn't want to save your girlfriend girlfriend for you. <clears throat> Here's Michael with an 80s um, B-movie horror kind of uh, reference. Alright. Yeah, let's go rescue your girlfriend. Alright, we're taking Dave. And he's the character the, that's automatically selected by default. All right, now what we're going to do here, uh, the verbs are pretty much all the same. We're going to, um, we're going to pull the um, carpet. We're going to um, pick up the key. We're going to um, use the key and the door. Now I'll show you. Oh, now you notice there's actually a wallpaper that's torn and all that. We're going to go, first thing you need to go in the kitchen. <clears throat> Pick up that flashlight. Now here's uh, Nurse Edna, and you don't want to get caught by her. Run like hell! All right, she didn't catch me. All right, now I'm free. Pretty much do whatever I want right now. Uh, we're going to new kid. We're going to grab uh, Michael. We're going to take him. I'm going to get him ready. This game is just really good. People might regard me as a um, as an expert, but I'm not. I, I, I read the walkthrough and I've played this game so many times. I've, I've finished it several other times. There's a cutscene again. Yeah, okay, we don't need to hear that. Open the door. Go inside there. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go to Dave. Alright, what we're going to do is open the fridge. We got to take out a couple items. We got to pick up the can of Pepsi. We got to pick up the batteries. Alright, we got to go in here. And we gotta get some. Um... Now this is a big deal. Walking behind the table, they mention in like an interview or whatever. It was a technological achievement in terms of programming and all that. All right, we need uh, the fruit drinks. Pick up the fruit drinks right there. Pick up the jar and a lot of these things you'll need. Uh, pick up the developer there. And it breaks. <coughs> That's actually written in. Oh, get the jar, you dummy. You little. Dumb. Okay, third time's a freaking charm. Damn. Fuck. Come on. Pick up the damn jar. God damn. Are you stupid? Alright, I got all the necessities from there. There's kind of a, um, oops. Better hide so I don't get caught. Now I believe it was about three minutes ago when I started the game, or about two minutes, yeah, about three minutes ago, and I believe uh, at about one, uh, one ten, or about one eleven. AM. <clears throat> you gotta watch the clock because there's an event. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to pull a prank on this dude right here, uh, Weird Ed. 
and uh, geez, that's actually a good idea. And uh, pull prank, and it's very good. And I'd like to kind of remake the game, and um, and kind of have the character acknowledge the prank. Go over here, and I need a couple items. Pick up this, and you'll need this stuff. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Now yeah, we gotta strength train our guys really quick. I gotta watch the clock. In about four minutes. Maybe it's at 10 minutes that this uh, event occurs. You'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. There's a green tentacle. Alright. He won't let you buy. You gotta feed him. Give him. Do not give him the Pepsi. He will drink it, but that's not what he needs. Um, You need that for the man-eating plant. He likes the bowl of wax fruit. Now, he'll eat other stuff. Like the rotting meat. Okay, but the, for some reason, wax fruit is his favorite. Now, um, give him the fruit drinks. Give fruit drinks to the tentacle. Uh, you only have one can of Pepsi in this game, and you need it for the man-eating plant to make it burp so it is harmless. <clears throat> now, we'll go, ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and get this dime. Pick up the dime now. You'll see later. I gotta steal three more dimes from the piggy bank. And the wallpaper here looks good. The graphics are really good on here. Now we gotta strength train our our uh, our, our people on the uh, hunkomatic. Now what you do is you go up and you use this thing. And there's a reason why you gotta use it. Uh, you basically cannot beat the game. You cannot finish the game without using the hunkomatic. You need it for opening the garage later on in the game. You also need it to get underneath the house. Now let this thing put him back in there. <clears throat> New kid. And Michael, we're going to strength train that dude. Now it's best really to get all your character strength trained so they can go anywhere in the mansion or do anything they need. Now you can't use Bernard with the tentacle at first because he's afraid of it. Michael will do fine. Dave and other characters will do just fine with the green tentacle. I use the hunkomatic. I need to set a stopwatch for whenever the game starts and all that, and then time this one event. Alright. We're going to take Michael down. We're going to hide him. Well, we're going to put him next to the mailbox. We're going to intercept something. And I won't play too much of this game right now because i gotta, I got to go to bed soon. I'm going to show you how to do this prank. On weird Ed. Now, now you got prank call Edna later on in the game, and you need to do that to distract her. There's an actual purpose there. Well, I, you'll see what I'm going for. <clears throat> Now watch. Here's why you need to be strength trained. All right, what we do? We're gonna pull the bushes away. We're gonna pull the grate, and we're gonna be able to get underneath the house there. But oh, are you a punt? Damn, crap! My old son of a friggin' punk! Damn! Oh, let's see if we still got it. No, we don't. Crap, I feel like a dummy. I should know better. I've been playing this for years. I oh, need add it to the panel. Access it quickly. Um, load. Um, 
Auto save. Ah, there we are. It's supposed to like auto save every five minutes. Let's see if we still got our stuff. Yep, everything's all good. Now I'm waiting for the doorbell to go off. Now if you hear a truck revving in the background, that's um that's just neighbors out in the parking lot. It's all quiet in my apartment except for um my other refrigerator compressor just kicked on and but you know I got it all quiet in here. You know, it's been almost ten minutes. Really, if you know how to do it, there's ample time. It just, you know, there's no difficulty level or setting in this game. It's just your difficulty is based on how proficient you are with the game. What's going to happen here in a couple minutes very soon is uh, a package will appear right here that the weird egg character <clears throat> has been waiting on. It's part of the game plot. And then you'll hear a doorbell and the package will appear. It basically, you know, it shows up in the game. What you gotta do is you gotta steal it and then you gotta run underneath the house and hide. And while Ed, uh, one of the mansion residents, when he's distracted, then you take your other character and sneak in Ed's room and rob him blind. There's a reason why it's good to do that. All right now. Well, it's been no, almost ten minutes. I was wondering how <clears throat> how long it takes because I'm pretty sure it's on a timer. Now I can run uh, Scum VM and therefore Maniac Mansion on the uh, Raspberry Pi, and I've done that before. But you know, screen capture on there probably isn't all that good because it's not a very powerful system. And this system right here is an Intel second generation Sandy Bridge Core i5 uh, model 2320, which is three gigahertz, typical operating frequency, 3.3 gigahertz. Uh, turbo speed um, but it can speed step in between all the way down to 1.6 gigahertz it's quad core with 8 gigs of RAM so it'll run this very very good and right now I'm playing the game while at the same time I'm screen shooting recording the, the screen which just uses software to capture frame buffer data uh, of what is displayed on screen and then compress it into uh, H.264 or MPEG4. Alright, yeah, here's Weird Ed here. <clears throat> He's talking to his mom, uh, Edna, in another cutscene. But anyway, as I'm playing this game, it's um, it's capturing uh, frame buffer data, which is computer data that is outputted to the screen, and it's compressing that into MPEG4 or um, H.264 which is MPEG-4 part 10 and saving it as this video that I'm recording anytime now, it's been a good 10 minutes for sure <coughs> I don't know, maybe it's 15 minutes or 12 minutes, I don't know got all my kids in position, I could have strength trained another kid if I wanted to Now, I'm still kind of rusty. I mean, I might seem like I have all the answers. I haven't really played this game much at all for a good year or whatever. You know, for about a year or so. Played it last night and was trying to record a video, but it got screwed up. I'm just kind of tired. I've been sick lately with a cold. And it's supposed to show up. Come on. 
and I got very limited time once the package appears. Come on. Probably like as soon as I go underneath the house, then he'll show up. Should be showing up any time now. It's been almost fifteen minutes. This could seem kind of boring. But anyway, there's all kind of neat software in GNU Linux. A lot of cool games. And you don't pay for any of the software. I haven't bought software in years. I mean, I just get it all for free in the Synaptic Package Manager. It's all public domain stuff anyway. Now, it's in an online software repository that's heavily encrypted. And protected um, and this is part of why Linux really doesn't get viruses or whatever because the software is very well vetted and thoroughly carefully checked and you're getting it from very very well trusted sources and um, whereas the typical way through Microsoft Windows oftentimes on the internet uh, various different sites and you don't know who's trustworthy or whatever and there's various other methods for why um, Linux is more successful in that regard. Well, it's been you know, been a good 15 minutes. Now this mailbox is here also because you can use it for another method of finishing the game. Now. Sometimes well, the easier way is to call the meteor police. Uh, you use Bernard to call the meteor police and get the meteor arrested. Uh, Michael, his special strength is he um, develops a microfilm um, by um, Ed, uh, you know, the Ed's microfilm, and um, his plans to storm into the secret lab and uh, he helps you get past the past the uh, purple tentacle and um, helps you finish the game and all that I've sent the meteor out into space in the weird Edsel of the car I've published its memoirs its novel uh, once and made it famous and it lets everybody uh, sets everybody free <coughs> And then, um, um, man, I'm getting tired of waiting. There's the event. Right. Oh, yeah, right. Right is like, all right, pick up, package. All right. Whole ass. In about 15 minutes. All right. All right. Oh, the doorbell. Now, watch. Everything is in his room. Piggy bank, hamster, everything. Now, new kid, go to Dave. Go in here, we pick up the hamster, pick up the key card, pick up the piggy bank, we open it, pick up the dime. No, that's what you think. No. Haul ass, get out of here. Hide in this room. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, dude, don't even know it.
Why did I try to open the sponge? Now we're gonna pull a shower curtain. Now you gotta uh, you gotta go in the garage and you find a handle to the faucet here uh, to the shower and turn on the water and then it causes dead cousin Ted to float and he moves over here and then you get to see the number that's written on the wall. Now that's important because you have to call Edna to distract her. Uh, and and but to call you need to um, you need to use the phone downstairs and um, oh yeah this dude watches. Wait. Oh wait. I'm gonna walk to your door. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the Pepsi's for. Use can of Pepsi. Oh well. Manning plant. What is? Um. Raises. Use the Manning plant. And um, I think it says to you, it's like, come here and like, let me whisper in your ear or something like that. Just wants to bite you. All right, now. Anyway, all you gotta do is use the can of Pepsi on the manning plant. And now it's no longer dangerous. It just burps. Now, you see this over here? Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to use a paintbrush with the paint remover on the wall blotch. And there's a door. Now, uh, the batteries are dead in the flashlight, so I'm not even going to attempt to use that. Alright, now, show you the reason why I stole the hamster. Because it was basically a bargaining chip with Ed. He doesn't seem to realize somebody stole his friggin' hamster. Uh, I guess he assumes it just ran off somewhere. Watch this. Now look, everything's stolen. And like, he doesn't seem to acknowledge it. It's just standard stuff, he says. And what you do is you give the hamster to Ed. Oh, my little hamster. I didn't know you ran off. Well, that's because he didn't run off. He got stolen. And I just gave you the hamster, and you didn't know that I stole it. Whatever, dude. So anyway, what I'd like to do is rewrite the game, do a remake, and it'd be nice where um, after you steal everything in the game and come back... Um, well, you know, when, when this guy over here he comes back to his room, I'd like for him to throw a bitch fit and gripe, you know, about how everything's all fine until he went to check on the door, and then all of a sudden he comes back and everything's gone. Um, it would it would just be nice if like I don't know there was a function. To where you can like drag his bed over and throw it out the window, <laughs> or something like that, you know, or you like anything, steal his little like airplane and little, little what was it? It's not a it's not a Tie Fighter or whatever. I don't know, but anyway, it's something from Star Wars. And um, you now here's Edna's room. You don't want to go in there. Uh, we're gonna grab some more stuff. Now the green tentacle lives up in here. Yeah, he's depressed. That's because he ate a bunch of crap. I'll pick up that record just in case. I'm gonna need a key over here. Yeah, you need that key to get in the garage. Yeah, um, a little information here. Yeah, the 
purple meteor. Uh, that's what you're going after. You gotta defeat him. Show you a little trick here. Oh gosh, Dave has got to open it up for him. Watch this. Be nice to make this simultaneous multiplayer. Now I use Michael to um, just pull this gargoyle head so it opens up this door. Now Dave goes down here and um, use the old batteries in the flashlight. Turn on the flashlight. Turn on light switch. All right. It's a nuclear reactor that powers the house. Alright, now you need to get this key. Now at some point you're going to be sent in this dungeon. Oh, the door's locked? Really? Oh, but I know what key it is. Yeah, you just go in that radioactive slime, it don't matter. I'll show you some things you gotta do. Come on, move you dummy. Damn. I mean, come on. Walk to Come on. Oh, there's several keys in this game. I think the one I just picked up it's a silver key, I believe. Um, it, like I said, it's been a while since I really played this game thoroughly. It's been maybe more than a year. <clears throat> Go in here and use this key. I believe it's this one in that door. Damn! Crap. Um. What the hell? I don't believe I might know which one does it then. Show you how I get it. Yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. It's a little chainsaw. There's no gas for it. You can't use it. It'd be nice if there was gas hidden somewhere. I kind of like to make a game about that. Uh, let's see. Cassette tape. Pick up the vacuum tube. Yeah, oh, you're so damn dumb. God damn, you just pull it out of the socket, you dummy. Oh, that means you gotta use Bernard. All right. Oh, I know where he's gotta go. There's a key right up there. That one might work. Um, yeah, open this. All right, turn on. Yeah, lamp. All right. Be nice to now. This staircase is non-functional. It's just ornamental, but it'd be nice if it took a shortcut somewhere. All right there's a loose panel. 
Yeah, you gotta grab that. You gotta pick up the cassette tape. Pick it up, dummy. You walk all the way up the mansion. See, it'd be nice for those stairs that take you up to like the third floor or something. At least the second floor. Right, we're going to this room over here. Use record on. Ah, that's the right record. All right, use cassette tape and the cassette recorder. Turn it on. Okay, it's recording, and then we use the um, Yeah, turn off, you dummy. Turn on. No, we're trying to record that. All right, turn off the uh, cassette recorder. All right, turn off the controller. Pick up the record. Oh, I knew that. All right. Pick up the cassette tape. Now go over here. I believe I recorded the sound that broke the uh, glass vase. There's a reason why you need to do that. <clears throat> All right, we use the cassette tape, the cassette player, turn it on, watch what happens. Cracks window, cracks chandelier. Turn it off. Uh, that's how you pick up key. Let me see if this key does. I'm not sure if this is the one that does this. Maybe it's the glowing radioactive key. Well, that one does that. Now, if you ever get in this dungeon, there's a loose stone. It generally matters. Loose brick, there it is. What you do is you pull it, or <clears throat> or push it, whatever the case may be. You need two kids. One of them will, will push or pull it, and you know, open up that door, and then the other kid walks out. Play this 
game for over half an hour. Now these two items here, riding turkey, riding ham, you don't need those. You can feed them to the green tentacle, but you know, there's no real need for them. It was a silver key. I had it all along. All right. Let me go back here. A new kid. I have Bernard do it because Michael's holding that thing. Well, we're gonna hide him under here for safety anyway. No, we need Michael. Because <clears throat> Purple Tentacle is going to check up on it. Anyway. Now here's why I, one of the main reasons why we got to get into the house. Film developer that fell underneath there. See this valve right here? Now the radio, yeah, it's cooled by. Do not press that button. Oh no! Pulls empty again. All right, so you gotta pick it up quick. Pick up the radio. Now you can kill uh, Dave or whoever by turning on the water again while he's in the pool. Now there's a nuclear reactor down there. All right, now you gotta. Change, motherfucker. Right. Yeah, he checks on it. There's no light down here. Right, close the valve. Now the pool's full of water. Now the place is not gonna blow up. All right. Now, watch this. Glass jar, remember that? All right. Use glass jar with swimming pool. All right, now you got a jar of radioactive water. Now you can kill yourself with the microwave by putting it in the microwave and it causes radioactive steam and you die. That's one of the ways you can die. All right. I'm gonna go empty this jar on the plant. <clears throat> also, um, radio. Open the radio. Batteries, yes. Now in Maniac Mansion Deluxe, you actually get to see all the icons of these little items here, and it's really good looking. Batteries. Use batteries in flashlight. Let's see if we got those batteries in there. Okay, so they're in there. Now you can use it for a lot of other stuff. All right. I'm going to have to call it quits here pretty soon when I go and use this on the plant.
Now Dave has absolutely no talent at all, so if you can do these things with Dave, then you can do them with anybody else. <clears throat> and Dave is the character I'm controlling right now. But it'd be nice to have multiplayer capability in this, where like all kids can be controlled simultaneously by different people, and especially you know with a gamepad and um, you know and, and plays the network and all that. It'd be so good. All right. Now use the um jar of water on the man-eating plant. And it grows cuz radioactive. That's going to have to conclude it for now. We hit F5. Save it as Beak Supreme. Alright, let me just test this, quit the launch or return the launcher. Load that. Alright. Load and we'll check out Beak Supreme. Yep, right where I left it. Okay, we're going to quit it. Oh, that's going to have to, gosh, it's been almost an hour. It's going to have to conclude my video tutorial for now on how to prank Weird Ed in uh, Maniac Mansion, how to basically rob him blind while he's trying to uh, wait for a package, uh, his commando package in the mail, and plus I show how to play the game and all that sort of thing. Uh, so until next time, I'm Beak Supreme, and this is my Maniac Mansion um, little walkthrough or little um, video here, and I'll make some more uh, for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel. And the reason why is because it just Beaklebotics it encompasses a lot of things, not just technology, um, but Linux uh, software, uh, gaming, and just. So you can understand some background of why I want to do what I want to do and make these games and. Um, arcade game project and all kind of other stuff so like I said until next time I'm Beak Supreme and this is for the Beaklebotics YouTube channel Petsum